I'm hot. Welcome to the Daily Smash for Tuesday, September 19th, 2023. I'm Rick. I'm Kelly. And you're hot. I'm hot, like, temperature. Let's I don't look. I don't look too hot right now because I left all my makeup at the desert. You look hot to me. Thank what you. are you wearing, that beautiful white dress? Oh, it's, this is um, it's a dress called C. It's mm -hmm. old. Mm -hmm. I don't shop anymore. And if I do shop, it's from Zara. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I bought you some outfits. You do, you do. You do when we're like, yes, you do. But... I don't shop like I used to. Yeah. I have so much clothes <laughs> um, that, you know, it's, um, I don't need to really dress up for anything like I used to. Right. We can just be casual. Actually, I save money not being on that show. How about that? My credit cards used to be like $30,000 a month. <laughs> I'm not joking being on that show. Not mine, anymore. Mine's the, mine are. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Uh, coming up, Kelly's uh, Kelly will weigh in on the Shannon Bedore situation. She's going to say what she's going to say. And, uh, and that's that. And that's that. But first, Ilya Wine. We're back in Newport Beach where we have our stash of Ilya bottles. We are big fans of this wine, and we know that you will love it, too. Cheers, my love. Clinky, clinky, we, we, drinky, drinky. God, I look horrible today. So no, forgive me for how I look. I spoke to uh, Layla Joy Williams today. She um, created this this wine. We're going to be on her podcast. We're going to do her. She has a podcast now. Mm -hmm. We're going to do her show. Rachel, you could tell us me to be on her podcast. Yes, that's tomorrow. But in the meantime, if you want to try this incredible wine, just go to ilia.com and use the discount code Rick and Kelly 20 for 20% off your first two bottles. Or you can get free shipping if you order three bottles or more. It's a great deal on a fantastic wine, and we highly recommend it. It's Rick and Kelly approved. Um, speaking of Rick and Kelly, oh, please subscribe here to the Rick and Kelly Show on YouTube. <clears throat> we're, we're growing fast. We got tens of thousands of views on our show today. Thank you! We got dozens and dozens of new subscribers on YouTube, and on Patreon we're blowing up. Yes. And this week on Patreon, the Rick and Kelly Show on Patreon.com, an exclusive interview with Jim Bellino. We showed a clip yesterday. I have another clip today. He he has never done an interview before. Ever. And I'm he's been asked. You, it's it's um he made me cry. He reveals something about one of his kids that I think many people will be shocked to find out. And we're gonna play I, that. Honestly, clip. he made me cry. Like and then Rick goes and then he was crying and Rick goes. They say in television or when you interview somebody, if you made them cry, you did your job. Yeah. I'm like, oh my it's God. It's like you score. We got oh tears. God. But that wasn't our goal. We just wanted to, you know, hear about his life uh, on the show before, during, and after. And he talked quite a bit about that. And we asked him about the lawsuit, He, you know, with uh, Tamara and Shannon. And he couldn't say a whole lot about that. But he did talk about lessons learned. And that's this clip right here. You shouldn't talk shit about people. And if you do talk shit about people... Be prepared to pay the consequences because when you get slandered or defamed, there is laws in place to protect us. And so I think people just need to be more aware and careful. And I think that the one good thing that came out of that, if anything, was it makes people more aware of what you say about people. So, Do you feel like you want? Um, it never really was about winning or losing for me. It was just really more about um, protecting my name mm -hmm. and my kids um, not having to read disparaging things about me that were absolutely not true. So it wasn't about winning or losing. And he did say that he thought in the end, he did, he could accomplish his goal, which uh, is great. So that's coming up on the Rick and Kelly show this week, the whole interview in its well, entirety. It didn't accomplish his goal because Tamara still talks crap and smack. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Not about and, him. No, not about him, but she talks about everybody else. Um, and she didn't learn her lesson. Um, Lessons were not learned with her. He's a he's a fascinating character. A beautiful home in Rancho Mirage, not far from our house in Palm Desert. Uh, which, by the way, is still available for the month of April next year. Kelly does not want me to rent it. I cause, don't. Because she wants to use it. And we won't be able to use it for five months. Right. So, um, we're not going to rent it, but we will for the right price. It's 28-day minimum. 
PicklePartyHouse.com. You wanted to talk about your lunch today with your mom. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I was reading the comments. It was so funny. I was reading the comments while we sat down and had lunch. We went to Nordstrom's Cafe, which is our favorite. I love the Nordstrom's Cafe. It's like my favorite meal. And um, I was reading them, the comments, and one of them said, can you take a video of the stuff you eat when you're out to dinner, out to lunch? It was so funny. And I was like, okay, fine, yes. Um, that was one of the comments yesterday's. Uh, and I'm like, okay, I'll take a video of what I'm eating. And so here it is. I was reading my comments and people want to know what um, I ate. This is one of my favorite restaurants, right? Nordstrom's. Um, no, they were great. Thank you. My mother got the French dip and I got this. So somebody want to know little short clips of like what I eat uh, when I go out to lunch. Hey. Hey, everybody. <laughs> How was it? Delicious. They have the best food there. That's at South Coast Plaza. Mm -hmm. on, a day, on a typical basis. And I'm really, really upset. They took out the home store in there. Really? South Coast Plaza is the highest end shopping mall, I think, in Southern California. Like the highest of the highest end. Now, Westfield Mall is nice, in, in, but it is the highest end. Like they have high, it's like the Beverly Hills in a mall. Uh -huh. All the designer stores, all, all the, the designers are in there. Beautiful. And um, Nordstrom's used to have this home store with like different things. It, it kind of reminded me of Barney's a little bit. They took it out and they put it in the Brea Mall. Like Brea, really? <laughs> no offense, Brea. <laughs> I don't know what any of that means, but but I can tell Kelly feels passionate about it. Yes. I want to say, oh, before we get to the Shannon thing, um, you're doing Rachel Yucatel's podcast tomorrow. I wonder if she's no gonna, Wednesday. Wednesday. Well, this is yeah. Tuesday show. Yes. I wonder. Yeah, if she, yeah, Wednesday. She's probably going to ask you about Shannon. Yeah, and I want to tell tell her no comment. Well, what do you want to tell our Smashers about Shannon? So it was interesting because my friend Elaine and, um, uh, and I have the text, Elaine and Julie. and Julie were at a restaurant with her that night. Where, Saturday night. Saturday night where, where she got the, uh, when the incident happened and they texted me this yesterday and they're like, yeah, she was, uh, um, you know, asking, she said she was going to make amends with you and that you guys were going to be friends again. And she was like, really excited about it. And then my friend Julie went to USC as well and she's single. And she was like, yeah, I really need friends right now. And, um, you know, she got her number and she texted her and she was like, yeah, maybe we can all have lunch together. And uh, it was like a really nice uh, thing. So I feel really bad. Uh, people are asking Oh yeah, all of a sudden now she wants to be friends with you. This, she reached out to me on Thursday. Right, it wasn't Sunday after she was arrested for drunk driving, late Saturday, early Sunday. It was Thursday. Correct. After she had dinner with Jeff Lewis Wednesday night. Yes. And Kelly, to her credit, has been gracious ever since. You're not bashing her now. You could pile on. If you wanted to, she said some very unkind things about you, but I'm not going to do that. You're 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 taking a high road. Well, and I, I just think, think that everybody has um, has had drinks and they've driven. Mm -hmm. Everybody has. What's crazy is you actually predict this would happen. I did, I did. I, it's in here somewhere in one of the smashes. I did yeah. predict. People have been happened. writing us about that and. I told you guys, I have a sixth sense. I told Rick when when he was, I go, you drive crazy. You're going to get an accident. You're going to get a very she bad one. She must have told me that 20 times. And it happened. It like, did. I have, like, I know things before it's going to happen. I'm not saying, like, I'm a psychic, but I'm intuitive, I guess. Or a witch. Yes. It's very, very <laughs> strange. Um, I don't condone anything that she did like that, but I empathy for her and uh, I want to give her grace at this time. I mean, you could just imagine how no, she must it, feel. It it's, must be horrible for her. Shannon. The worst thing to happen, you know, and, and, I'm, and I respect very much that you're not kicking her when she's down 
and, and, and I and I don't mean to do that either. Um, I've always liked Shannon, and I, I wish her the best, and I hope she gets through this okay. It's a, this is the worst. And, you know, she's got three daughters going to college. You know, this is the this is the bad timing and just an awful situation. She obviously made a mistake. We all make mistakes. We're human. Yeah. None of us are perfect. And none of us can, you know, I mean, it's easy to point fingers and say, you know, shame on you. But, you know, it's actually an awakening for each and every one of us not to drink and drive because what are the consequences? You could kill somebody. Something horrible could happen. You could kill yourself, kill somebody else. And it's just a reminder. It's a reminder for all of us not to drink and drive. I mean, we have Uber, thank God. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the lesson here. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, sometimes I think God gives us lessons and, and this was like somebody telling her from above, you know, you can't do this next time you could. And I know Shannon, she's a smart cookie. She, she will not do this ever again. You know, we all make mistakes. It's learning from them and moving on. Well, you know, I, I couldn't agree more. And Jolie called me and she's like, Mom, if you ever did that, I would kill you. <laughs> but see, it's like lessons like that. You want to know, you want to know what a good person Kelly is? She said, let's bring her some food. And we went to Sabatino's and we got uh, a bunch of um, food for her. Lasagna, stuffed peppers, some sausage. And we delivered it to her door just now. And there was a big, huge paparazzi truck out there. And Rick goes, that's not a paparazzi. That's a, that's a news truck. The it's called a microwave truck. I go, I don't know. It looked like paparazzi to me. It was a microwave van, a local TV station. I don't know which one because it's unmarked, but it's parked right in front of her house. So I texted to I texted Shannon and I go, dude, there's a whole bunch of paparazzi outside of your house right now. And she goes, I'm talking to Rebecca. Rebecca's from Bravo. She's a PR um, executive there. And she's like, don't leave your house. Like, yeah. how awful that must be. You know, I wonder, there were probably, because paparazzi camped outside our home three times when we were living over in the Port Streets and took pictures without our knowledge because we never saw them. Mm -hmm. There probably was a paparazzi sitting in one of the parked vehicles on that block, and they probably got a picture of you walking in with the food. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't think I saw anybody in there. No, but I, they hide. They're, they're very good at hiding. Yeah, I don't know. But um, I have to say... Vicki Gunvalson is a very good friend mm -hmm. at this time to her. Tamara, not so much. Um, but she's going to go get some DoorDash with her. Uh, she had her, her uh, hair person there. So I'm glad someone is there with her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, hang in there, Shannon. And Kelly will... I mean, I, you guys are going to have your lunch when you can have your lunch. I mean, and... It's just heartbreaking, you know? It like, is. It is. It's heartbreaking. Like, I just... And you think it... You feel a little bit of, like... You feel bad for her, but could you imagine if that was you and there's like paparazzi hanging outside your door? Like, could you imagine? That would be horrific. Well, that's exactly what would happen if you or I were involved in a similar incident. You know there would be paparazzi and it would be ugly. And God forbid. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not doing it. We won't do it. And like you said, it's a great lesson mm -hmm. for us and for everyone. And unfortunately, she... You know, she made that mistake, and I'm sure she's she regrets it. And real world. What's so funny is uh, it's not maybe I, should, I need to stop talking. Okay, it's not. I'm not talking about that. I was talking about something else. We're going back to the desert tomorrow. We have to go to the nursery and buy a bunch of bushes for Ficus. our backyard. Ficus, and we have to pick out a hedge for the other side. I think we're getting short olive trees, olive bushes. Mm -hmm. For the other side of the pickleball court. Oh my God! One of your comments said, "So you have to put a fence around your pickleball court and not around your pool." I know <laughs> that's how stupid the city of those architectural people are over there. Like it's ridiculous. And then I have to have soundproofing there. Like really, like that. Like like use your common sense. I like, just want to say, first of all, I'm grateful we don't have to put a fence around the pool. I know, Second but all, we don't need a fence around the pickleball court. We it's don't. Like stupid. It costs it costs us six thousand dollars to put that thing around there. I think it was more. But more. Our backyard is fenced in, so you can't just walk into our pool from the street. You would have to open a gate to get in there, and no little kid's going to be able to open that gate to get in our backyard. So that you know that is one thing. But I know that 
In many I places, I can't even get into my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> but in many places, they require a safety fence around pools. Mm-hmm. I had to do that in Miami. Yeah, I don't know that the logic of of. Of, of, of that idiot, that Jeffrey guy behind me and that stupid Kimberly. Mm. Well, it's a city code. The city code requires a fence around a sports court, <laughs> which makes zero sense. I know. My mom's laughing at me. Yeah. Hey, thanks again, Bobby. I want to go on the record here and say I appreciate very much you watching at home. Of course. No problem. Taking care of Joey while we're doing our thing. You're you're a wonderful mother-in-law. Aw. Well, you're a pretty great Son-in-law. Damn right I am. <laughs> I give you a 10 plus. 10 plus as a son-in-law. How about that? Word. Yeah. I have an, an in the news item. Oh, yeah? In the news. In the news. More sad former housewives news. Oh. Sorry. Croy Bierman says he and self-absorbed Kim Zolciak are destitute and their mansion is facing for foreclosure again. You know what? Their mansion, they have a mansion. Yeah. And it was like $1.3 million? Oh, you know, it says $3 million. Oh, does it say $3 million in $3 there? $3 million Georgia Estate. Okay. They're trying to sell their $3 million Georgia Estate because they're financially destitute. The retired NFL player filed court documents Monday uh, stating that he and his estranged wife must be permitted to unload their house because the IRS has placed a $1.1 million lien on it. He cited Zolciak's allegedly reckless spending habits and love for online gambling as the cause of their dire financial situation, which also includes a $400,000 lawsuit filed by BMW and a $100,000 suit filed by Capital One. The athlete says in the documents that despite the lien on their home, there is some equity in the property, but they would have to sell it immediately as a second foreclosure looms on the horizon. If you know you are going... And you're destitute. Why would you keep that house? Yeah. Why? I mean, they were living large, these two. I mean, way above their means. They must have had... Oh, look at that. See? The rolls. Their their burn rate was too high. They're blinged out. We were just talking about that with Vicky this morning. So funny. About burn rates? We were talking... She was talking about how uh, she lives below her means... And how it's uh, you need to be financially responsible because mm-hmm. we're talking about being on these shows, and she's like, I never really um, lived above my means, and a lot of these people because it is expensive. You're putting on phoniness and things like that. To well, be you were on- talking about you know all the shopping you did to be on the Housewives. You spent a ridiculous amount of money. In hindsight, I would never have done that. Yeah. And I would never do that. Like, how would you? How would you have done it? Well, I love shopping. I have an addiction. <laughs> um, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I would try to find like people to give me clothes, like like send me clothes. Yeah. You know things like that. I would I would do that. And you're also a I would, bargain shopper. I am a bargain shopper. She yeah. is. And yes. she, she's good at. I'm it. good. I'm good at bargain shopping. You are. Uh, but but I, was, I didn't. I didn't back then because I needed that outfit right then and there, and they didn't have it. Yeah. Um, I was going to work It's not on a that. good investment. What? If you had stayed on the show, I was going to work on getting you a uh, deal. I would have done Rent the Runway. I never did that. Um, you know, I would have done things like that. Because where I wouldn't have paid $3,000 for a dress. I would have bought, you know, paid like 500 to right. rent it. But it's unfair for women because you can only wear an outfit once on TV, right? I don't know. I wear mine all the time. Well, <laughs> I wear my stuff over and over again. I don't care. Well, that's great. I really don't care. I'm, I'll wear it over and over again. Like I'm not going to be um, stupid like that. This this chick was stupid with her money. Instead yeah. of saving it, you got to build wealth. You can't be spending like this fr- frivolously. And uh, she lived above her means. Mm-hmm. And now they're paying a big price for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we appreciate your support once again. Uh, don't forget to subscribe here if you haven't yet. And uh, get yourself some million wine. And uh, it's delish. We're going to see you here again tomorrow. Woohoo! And more patrons flowing in. Yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> see you guys. Bye.